Hello, everyone. We are delighted to announce that Professor uh, Dr. Eva Osiel uh, Nelson, winner of the OE Award for Excellent Leadership Award 2022, is our first speaker of 2023. And the name of the talk we are going to have today is Open Leadership for the Ecosystem of Open Education Implementation. And this session is going to be focusing on open leadership and open collaboration in the ecosystem of openness in education within the frameworks of human rights, social justice, equality, democracy, and well being. Um, we are pleased to have you here, uh, Eva. So uh, happy to see your presentation. Uh, thank you so much for this uh, very kind introduction. And uh, also, uh, thank you so much for the kind uh, invitation to uh, let me speak here at uh, Goji on um, uh, webinars and the first webinar of the of the year 2023. It is my great pleasure to be here with you. And um, hello to everyone who is here. Uh, Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, which is the way we greet each other nowadays. Um, for me, it is uh, more or less beginning of the evening, uh, based in Sweden. <clears throat> so yes, um, the, the session will be um, uh, about what was just announced about uh, open leadership and open collaboration and the ecosystem of openness. And I have been asked to uh, uh, discuss with you uh, some work I'm dealing with right now and uh, my research interest and of course also about um, the award I only uh, got um, from OE Global and what that uh, means for me and uh, I, would, I think for the community with this kind of um, recognition. So I am an independent uh, consultant and researcher since uh, 2015, uh, and I do a lot of research on uh, on open education and OER. I'm the vice president of the Swedish Association for uh, Open and Flexible and Distance Education here in Sweden. And as many of you know, I work uh, with ICDE, the International Council for Open and Distance Education, where I'm in the board for the second period, and I'm also sharing the OER advocacy committee since 2018 and we are now just going into our um, third uh, mandate uh, period for 2023-2024 and I'm so exciting to work with all the ambassadors again uh, around the globe. Uh, I will um, uh, share with you some of my thoughts about this um, topic and then we will also have the opportunity to discuss and have a dialogue uh, uh, in the end. Uh, we have the chat, so please write your um, comments and reflections, and uh, I really think, I hope we will have a great discussion. Uh, so first of all, uh, congratulations to all of us, because today, the 24th of January 2023, it is the International Day of Education, and it's so worth to celebrate that, uh, because ed uh, education, and especially open education, is a human movement that thrives on the shoulders of extraordinary people that make it possible. And it is about human rights and social justice and equity. So today is a very, very special day, so congrats to all of us. <clears throat> I will start to, um, to share uh, some background about uh, OE uh, Global and their uh, award uh, scheme, which they have um, had for many years. I think many of you are maybe familiar with it. And maybe some of you have also been uh, the winner of some of the awards. <laughs> so they have awards for um, different kinds of categories and that they have what they call uh, individual award winners. And they are in uh, four categories, leadership, educator, uh, emerging leader and support specialist. And then there is also a lot of other kind of categories like um, uh, open collaboration, for example, which I also will talk a bit more about. So um, for the leadership award, we were three um, um, colleagues uh, on the short or shortlisted. And I think you have seen the announcement already by our global. It was Delmar and myself and Hubert. Robert, sorry, pronunciation. Uh, I've mentioned that I share the OER advocacy committee on behalf of ICDE. And we have been um, a committee since 2017. It was launched at ICDE conference in, um, in Canada at that time. 
And um, we were also shortlisted in the category of open collaboration. And that was, of course, also very honorable because um, the work we are doing in, in the committee is that we are ambassadors from all the regions of the world and we meet regularly and we do do some joint work uh, uh, in our advocacy. Um, we were shortlisted, but we were not the, the winner. The winner, the winner was the European Network of Open Education Libraries in Europe, Spark Europe, based in Italy. So congrats to them. So about the uh, leadership award, it is um, uh, presented to an individual who has demonstrated significant leadership in long-standing involvement with open education, a person who has made significant and clear contributions to the uh, furtherance of the open education movement, whose contributions to open education have spanned regions and, uh, and or had a global impact. <clears throat> so, um, as I said, I, I was shortlisted among the three of us, and then I was the, the winner. And it was, um, of course, uh, so uh, honorable, and I was so humble, and I was so pleased, because it is as uh, all of us are, who are working in this area, I used to say that we are all winners, because we are, have the pleasure and honor to work in this field. Um, but it's also so important to be recognized, uh, not at least internationally, in the, in the international community, what you are doing, because that also inspires us to move further on and to be in this uh, community, but also to go outside our community, because, I mean, that is also very much important. We talked just with Rob uh, before the, the um, <clears throat> webinar started, how important it is to go outside our community to work with the Triple Helix uh, Alliances, for example, with an openness uh, movement, because all of us who are already in, we already believe in it, but we need to have a, a larger community, even outside our own field, so to say. Uh, so this is what was listed in the uh, global um, criteria. I think I can just uh, leave it for you to read yourself. And this was um, this was the um, uh, how to say it. <laughs> this was um, uh, how how they based the, their nomination for for me to be the winner, and uh, <clears throat> what they they uh, said about me. I also will leave it just for for you to read, if you want. Maybe I can also say something about my background and my passion about uh, this field. So I have spent uh, the last uh, 20 years uh, in the field of uh, advocating for open education. And I was among uh, many of you as well along the beginning of when OER started back in 2002. So I have done a lot of interviews uh, and uh, webinars and um, articles and publications uh, since the award was um, was out, and um, <clears throat> uh, people have noticed it uh, and they have uh, recognized it and they have contact contacted me and of course that is fantastic, and I have got um, quite often the uh, the question, what open leadership is for me. Uh, first of all, it is very important to, whenever I talk about open education, I always put it into the context of UNESCO SDGs, and not just number four, but many of the others as well, because SDG four lead to the other, to uh, achieve the other one, many of the other ones. And also open education is about uh, common goods, and it's important for individuals, for human rights, and for the planet. And it's also closely related to the accessibility and inclusive inclusivity, and I believe it's important to have this umbrella context to truly understand why the work we do in this, this field is so important. And that again, it is important to put it openness in an ecosystem. And um, for me, good leadership is 
in, in open education is about facilitating, encouraging, and inspiring in the community. And I also believe in resilience and agility. Um, and that is important because uh, the world is changing so rapidly those days, and not at least in the field we are working in. And also uh, that you need, really need to have a strong belief uh, in what you are doing. I mean, that is obvious, but it is really important that it comes also from, from your heart and from your actions and from your mindset. <clears throat> Uh, this was an article in ICDE. Um, so um, it ended also up, uh, besides this leadership award, uh, there was this decade award, uh, one with uh, Giovanni Samotti and Robert Schuer got the lifetime achievement for his uh, work for many, many years in the fields. So this is uh, the background of the uh, award. And if you have any questions for that, we can take that maybe later on. So now I will turn it on to um, uh, OER and the field of openness and the ecosystem of openness. Uh, first of all, I think it is quite important to have this kind of timeline because sometimes we think it is some kind of new phenomenon, but uh, it's actually not. And as I said, I have been involved myself since the very beginning when the term uh, OER was coined. And I'm sure many of you has been as well. And um, Maybe those are the most significant uh, timelines about the Cape Town Declaration, the um, Paris Declaration, the Cape Town Declaration 10 plus and the Ljubljana de Declaration. And then it ended up in, uh, in the UNESCO recommendation in 2019. <clears throat> uh, already with the Cape Town Declaration um, uh, 10 plus in 2017, they uh, emphasize uh, the openness uh, ecosystem for example, those um, um, 10 um, aspects about uh, communication open, about empowering um, the next generation, about open pedagogy, about connecting and um, uh, with other uh, open movements, about uh, thinking outside the institutions. Again, here we talk about the Triple Helix alliances and the ecosystem of that, and uh, going beyond the textbooks. And then of course we have the X card, which are new things coming in. Um, but this already shows how important it is to uh, really see the many dimensions of openness, where just OER is one piece of it. And you can't actually work with OER if you don't put it in a context. And the we are is so much as all of us know. It is not about the resources as such. It is about the higher values, uh, as I started to, to, to talk about, about um, the value of human rights, social justice, and equity, and education for all. And not at least about lifelong learning. And I used to say myself that the real challenge with our OER is to take the OER outside the formal institutions, to take it to people as you and me, to people to the street, to people outside the, the, uh, the formal educational system. And that is the real challenge. And that is what I used to work a lot, a lot with and also to advocate a lot, a lot with. Because we hear very quite often that um, people are saying, yes, we are working with OER in my course, in my institution, in my subject, et cetera, and my students. But it is uh, having a larger outreach and that is very, very important. Uh, so just yes, to say something about um, uh, the OER recommendation, we quite often uh, refer it to SDG 4, but even in the recommendation, uh, many of the other SDGs are mentioned, uh, like number 5, 9, uh, 10, and 16, and 17 in particular, but also many of the others. And I also think this is very, very important when you are an advocate on openness to, to really see this larger picture that uh, it will lead to achieve many of the SDGs, not just done before. Um, I know that all of you are familiar with the recommendations, so no need to go um, further into that. But again, this is very important to, to stress, uh, and that is also what I do always, and uh, what we're trying to do also with um, the work with the OER Advocacy Committee to work on all those five areas, because those also need to be seen in an ecosystem at all levels, at the meta level, macro level, 
uh, meso level, micro level, and nano level. And it goes also together. You need to, of course, have capacity building, which is area one, about developing, developing supportive policies, about effective, inclusive, and equitable access to quality OER, about nurturing the creation of sustainability models for OER, and fostering and facilitating international cooperation, which actually is uh, cover all the other fours. But again, also what is said, what is said uh, in the recommendation, and um, you need to see all those five areas together. And then we have evaluation and monitoring as well. And that also goes for all the five, five uh, areas in the recommendation. So this, would, this is also something you need to see in an ecosystem that they have an impact and they have an influence on each other. It is difficult, for example, to work about capacity building if you maybe don't have any policies. <clears throat> it is um, easier if you have international collaboration because then you are in an international community and you can learn and share with and from each other, et cetera. Um, it is also uh, important to mention the OER uh, Dynamic Coalition, who really is there for helping all of us who are advocates uh, and leaders in uh, the open, open education movement, because they are really doing a lot uh, to help and to facilitate and to support member countries to achieve uh, the OER, OER recommendation. Uh, and right now, uh, member countries are in the process of um, monitoring and evaluation uh, and evaluate what they have been done since 2019, because now it is also time to report what uh, has happened in the countries. And maybe some of you are involved in that process. I'm involved in that process here in Sweden, for example. Um, so when you're talking about uh, the ecosystem of openness, I think this uh, image from Paul Stacey who also was actually the form, I would say form, because, because he has just finished his um, leadership role at OE Global. But he has um, uh, created this very nice image about the ecosystem of openness, where you can see OER is just one part. And we can also see that open policy, for example, is another part, which is also included in the OER recommendation. And there is an open data, open access, uh, open science, open GLAM, um, and the open government, for example, just to mention some. And also that it is needed to uh, see this ecosystem at all the levels I've mentioned, the meta, the macro, the meso, uh, the, the micro, and the nano level. And nowadays we, when we talk about OER, we are not just talking some about OER and that the resources as such, and that is mentioned also in the in the recommendation. It is very much about open educational practices and open educational culture to work and to nurture a, a culture of openness to the work with OER. Uh, this is just another image about uh, the ecosystem and the open system. And again, you can recognize the same kind of uh, features about open access, open data, open education, open government, open source software, open science, scholarship, and the licenses, of course. And actually, I would say and argue that this everything starts with the licenses. And I mean, we who are in the field, we know that because it is how we license uh, work which is, has been done and what is paid by tax money should go back to the taxpayers and that is why open licenses are so important and with an open license you can then you create OER so that everything starts with that. Um, here is another um, uh, framework for openness. It is a framework for uh, in eight dimensions. I think many of you are familiar with that as one. That as well. So it is about um, participatory technologies. It is about people, openness, and trust. And this can't be emphasized enough because whatever kind of strategy or recommendation or policy or whatever we have or what kind of technology, everything is made 
for people, by people. And trust is very, very important. And uh, we come back to maybe that with uh, the issue of trust when we discuss about quality, because here trust is a uh, very important um, uh, uh, issue. It is about innovation and creativity, uh, sharing ideas and resources, uh, connected community, uh, learning generated, uh, reflective practice, and peer review. So this also this framework also shows how you can work with. Uh, nurturing uh, an openness and uh, the cultural openness to, um, to embrace all those dimensions. Another framework is the one from Joint Research Center in Europe, where they have uh, this uh, image, uh, or this uh, framework, sorry, uh, for with 10 dimensions of open education. There are those four um, transversal uh, dimensions about leadership, strategy, technology, and quality. And then we have the six core dimensions about content, pedagogy, recognition, collaboration, research, access. And all those 10 dimensions together uh, make a framework for, for openness and for um, um, nurturing a culture of openness. Of course, what kind of strategy and what kind of leadership you have will have an impact and influence all the others. It will affect, for example, uh, the quality models you're using. It will affect all the core dimensions, what kind of pedagogy you're using, what kind of, um, rec how rec you see on recognition, how you look at col collaboration and research, et cetera. So they all have some kind of um, inter interaction and uh, influences and impact on each other. I can't uh, stress this enough, how, how important it is to, to really uh, look at this ecosystem because quite often I hear that, I mean, you are looking at the resources as such. We are using open textbooks, but that is not enough. You need to have to see the framework because otherwise you can't, uh, can't work with, with um, neither the recommendations, uh, neither to, to nurture the uh, open education practice and culture. So, um, now I come over to um, uh, some talk about uh, open leadership and what I'm very much um, influenced uh, by. And um, first of all, there are three, uh, three um, dimensions which are important. Uh, I think I started to talk about that already earlier on. You really have to have and believe, need to have and believe in what you are doing. Uh, it is about the mindset you have what you believe in. It is the, it's about the behaviors you have, what I value, and about the practices. Um, this is uh, another framework which I'm inspired of. Um, um, it is um, important to, uh, to see the default moving to openness and to do open in a better way. And for that, there are four um, areas which are important. It is about um, uh, inclusiveness, of course, uh, that everyone has something special to contribute and diversity is uh, fruitful uh, because uh, it is um, important to have different kinds of thoughts, different kind of um, uh, settings, different kind of um, uh, influences um, and diversity is important to, to um, to empower, and everyone has a, has a say, and every every voices must be heard, <clears throat> and everyone uh, has something special they can contribute with, and together it will be much larger than if everyone is every everyone or all of the, all of a company or all of the organizations goes in the same kind of direction. Uh, another one is about growth. Uh, to um, um, recognize that everyone has untapped potentials and about enterprise everyone has everyone benefits when we all put the, the company and the values and the organization it says company here in this framework yeah, maybe not so good but but to put uh, the 
the values and the strategies and your organization first and what you are believing in and what you're trying to achieve within your organization. And also the opt-in that everyone has the responsibility to lead. Everyone is a leader, but maybe in different kind of, the, um, maybe not just in, in directions, but also for different kind of tasks. And everyone has a say, and that is also why everyone is a leader because um, uh, it is used to say, uh, be the, the leader you want to have and that then you must lead yourself as well. Uh, so um, some thoughts about um, how open leaders maybe are thinking. Uh, it has already been discussed uh, earlier on. Uh, it is uh, important that everyone deserves clear, direct and constructive feedback, um, for example. And also that they can do that from, uh, from others, not just from, from the leader as such, but also from the, the peers. And um, also about uh, that um, people will trust and respect uh, the leadership abilities only if one are honest with them and provide as much uh, details as possible in a clear and um, responsible way and with trust. Uh, that all members of the organizations are uh, potential stakeholders in uh, in the work. And everyone uh, is affected by by or interested in the decision. Um, and they understand, understand uh, who made it and how to, to receive it, to arrive to it, sorry. Uh, so everyone has uh, an understanding what is, uh, what is the goal, what are our what is about the process and how do we achieve what we would like to do. To have this uh, in both the values, but also in the mindset and in the actions. Um, this is another uh, nice uh, framework uh, for uh, an open leadership for uh, change. Uh, again, here is very much stressed that everyone understand um, what um, open leadership is and how it is understood and how the, the disciplines can be involved and how to embrace the diversity and how this open leadership can be a, a sustainability, improving sustainability and maintenance because it is a, um, a leadership which uh, empower all the members in within the organization and when people are empowered they can take the responsibilities because then then there is something in it for them not that someone else is saying what they are, have to do or the strategy says that or the policy says that or the schedule says that but they have the power within them and that is also again very much about trust and uh, empowerment <clears throat> And of course, uh, working uh, in the line with open leadership, uh, you need to also uh, uh, really look at uh, that everyone uh, has a say, everyone's, everyone's voices are heard, and everything which you're doing are aligned with uh, the pathways you would like to, to, to go or what you would like to achieve. <clears throat> so, that we are some kind of um, framework which uh, used to inspire me and what what I try to what I believe in um I will just say something about um now about the futures of education and also um why there is a need for open leadership and why there is a need for this system change in not at least in the educational system and we all know about that not at least since the pandemic which all affected us very, very uh, terrible. But one good thing, how terrible the pandemic was, was that maybe we learned how we need to um, respect each other in different ways. And also um, how we need to uh, change what maybe we have been talking on for years, but now it is really the time for that change. And uh, one change is about um, uh, that the pandemic has affected every aspect of people's well-being. And that is one uh, very important um, parameter when you're talking about open leadership. 
And that is also why I have stressed the people so much because it is very much about well-being and about being seen. Uh, <clears throat> some work which I'm dealing with right now and for some years is about, um, as I mean, everyone else more or less, is about the SDGs. And I do, I work uh, very much um, uh, with that and I do, don't do use to have any talks, any kind of work without um, um, having the, the SDGs uh, as the foundation and the background. Because as I said also earlier on, um, not at least SDG 4 has an impact and has uh, is also fostering and will lead to most of the other SDGs. Uh, I'm also very influenced about uh, the futures of education and the new social contract. And this came before the pandemic. So already before the pandemic, there were a lot of um, initiatives about the need of change and the need for a new, new social contract within education. And that is why openness is so important and open leadership is very crucial to go in this kind of directions about a new social contract. Um, from UNESCO, it is said that if we are to address inequalities and discrimination, if we are to strengthen social cohesion, if we are to, to, to steer the green and digital transitions, then individuals need the possibility to learn throughout life. And here is why open education is really, really um, crucial. And another citation is, uh, we need a new social contract for education, broadening, broadening the right to education towards a right to learning throughout life. So again, lifelong learning is very much import of importance. And that is also why I will argue that we need to take OER, not at least outside uh, the institution to achieve the goals for lifelong learners to, uh, and lifelong learning throughout life. So there is this need for a new social contract to repair injustices um, while we are transforming the future as well. And also, uh, it is important to stress that uh, today's gaps in access, participation and outcomes are based on yesterday's exclusions and oppressions. Education to today is very much uh, exclusive. It's just the people who have the right uh, competences, the right uh, degrees, etc., who can enter to at least higher education. And that leave, leaves a lot of people behind. And we all know that uh, if we should um, educate all people around the globe, they need to be built one university a day. And that is not desirable. That is not uh, feasible. Uh, that is why, again, why open education is the only way forward. <clears throat> and um, it, it's about learning to emphasize um, and empathize, uh, to cooperate, to address uh, producers and buyers, and to navigate conflict are valuable in every society. And um, for example, uh, numbers without narratives, connectivity without cultural inclusion, information without empowerment, and digital technology and education without clear purposes are not desirable. It is also said in this uh, new um, social contract that uh, everything what we're doing in the education uh, need to be addressed to the SDGs. <clears throat> so uh, they are emphasizing on the need to be a new a research agenda for education, a safeguarding and transforming skills, Teachers and the teaching profession need to be changed. Pedagogies and solidarity and cooperation, uh, curriculum and the knowledge commons, uh, education across different times and spaces, and uh, the need to be renewed international solidarity and cooperation. So to um, work on that, this is maybe not new, but it is um, maybe uh, addressed in uh, some new uh, dimensions. Uh, it is more than ever important to learn to know your learners. That was not at least uh, obvious uh, within the pandemic where a lot of institutions, you know, uh, just put all everything online uh, without knowing the learners uh, sitting out there, maybe sharing one computer, maybe don't have a computer at all. Uh, maybe just have um, 
um, no inter interconnections uh, or connect connectivity. Uh, and also a different time of, time of time zones and not at least the well-being aspects. Uh, so for learn to know your learners, uh, there need to be learner agencies and well-being, caring and empathy are important um, dimensions, as well as diversity and inclusion and active citizens and Green Deal. Uh, those um, and digital transformation and those four uh, last ones, not at least, are very much stressed in um, by the European Commission here in Europe. And also, of course, they are worldwide dimensions as well. Uh, and as you can see in the end, um, the new social contract built very much about people, processes, products, and resources, and put really the people first, because again, nothing can be done without the people. And Everything has to be done by people for people. Uh, so we need to build a resilient recovery. And maybe those uh, highlighted yellow spots are most important about equity in education, green recovery, resilient healthcare, the global economy, the power of youth, and of course, vaccinating the world. <coughs> Uh, today, uh, earlier this uh, afternoon, I attended the uh, inquest uh, web webinar on um, the new quality agenda uh, in response to the global trends and challenges and um, the values of uh, international standards and guidelines, the, the new um, guidelines which they have, have worked on. And there are five dimensions which need to be uh, incorporated, embedded, empowered in uh, the new social contract as well and uh, the openness of education. That is about diversity and inclusion, relevance, core values of higher education in this case, recognition, and you see here trust come back again. Uh, many of those, uh, I mean, more or less all of those five dimensions, we have already been talked about uh, quite a lot in other kind of frameworks, but it is really, really important that those have to be the core values in what we are doing in our educational uh, organizations and systems. So now I will come to the end. Um, the lifelong learning uh, agenda and platform uh, who are working on that is very, very uh, important and they stress that Access to education is a fundamental human right. That was also what I started with. Uh, it is vital for the personal, social, and professional development of children and young people. It empowers them to survive, thrive, and rise to meet everyday challenges. And the way forward, the more or less only way forward is about open, flexible learning and distance education. Um, which is a strategy that enables economic, social, political, and digital justice to enable personalized, collaborative, lifelong learning across the lifespan that focuses on health, well being, inclusion, equity, and the smart future for individuals and the planet. So that is why we who are working and advocating for open education. <coughs> Uh, it is so important um, uh, to, to cont of course, continue, but this is the way forward and we need to uh, grow the community. We need to go outside our own community with uh, the triple helix uh, alliances, uh, with uh, the labor market, with other kind of stakeholders, because that is uh, the only way forward. So by that, I will end. And I will be very happy to uh, discuss with you now because there is a lot of things to discuss and to reflect on. But maybe before I will finish, actually, uh, as I'm working for ICDE, and uh, Rob Farrow is here as well. I, I didn't have a slide on that, but with ICDE, we have a European project which is called Encore Plus. Maybe some of you are following that because they have been running a lot of webinars during the two years, and now there's one year uh, left. Uh, and um, they have uh, in this project uh, the ecosystem of openness and OER is uh, 
the core uh, focus of this project. So if you haven't followed it uh, already, uh, please do not do so. You can sign up for newsletters and um, you can attend the, the webinars. So by that I will end and I will love to discuss with you. Thank you so much.